Since the 70s, as an essential and remarkable figure of photography, Jan Gruver has built a major work for nearly 40 years. It is in this Perigord house that Jan Gruver will install her studio left as it was at her death in 2012. Before she moved here, she did the big color still lifes, the, like this. And when you walked in her studio in New York on the Bowery, it looked like a stage set. I mean, it was so elaborate what she'd done with it behind the tables and stuff that were there that she was going to photograph. And when she got here, she did the same thing essentially, but outside. And there's a lot of platinum prints, big platinum prints of uh, lighter right around out here, uh, of her just putting ladders and this and that and that here, and then just and taking the photos. It was very much like what she was doing in New York, except it was outside, because we hadn't been outside for most of our lives. And it was a big space, and so it was exciting. And that was one of the other times that I actually helped her in her photographs. There would be a like a phony Greek column pedestal, and she'd put a board across that and then stuff on top of it. That would be the still life. And they were very nice, but after a while she was getting really frustrated with that because they felt like they were coming out the same. And I said, simply take care of the bottoms, because the bottoms all basically were the same. It was just the action was a top half of the photo. And that's when the color still lifes happen. I mean, naturally, I didn't imagine that. But I mean, the huge, and also, boy, did she take care of the bottoms. Whew. It was just amazing. When you see the photo, it's not just all over the place. It's just, this is pointing to that. And that's, it's like a Renaissance painting. And, and that's one of the things about Jan's work. It's never about the subject. I can't say never, but almost ever. Usually, if it's about the subject, it was a joke. But it was about space and how things relate to each other. She did print herself. I don't know much about that, but I know it was a fairly elaborate deal with the chemicals and the material itself, the platinum and palladium. And she had to have a special box with fluorescent tubes in it of a special kind that exposed the thing. And it had to be a contact print. That's what, one of the reasons she wanted the big camera. She didn't cheat on anything. That's what it's like, I can say about technically. And she didn't maneuver, including with a digital camera and computers and stuff. Uh, she didn't play with negatives. Um, it's all just straight. I think she got, uh, in a sort of art sense, smarter, meaning smarter at looking at things. And a lot of people don't understand how to look at things, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. I mean, they, all they care about is the subject matter and what the painting or photo means. Meaning is that Jan's photos never mean anything. And she just really wants the visual excitement of it, of your eye just flying around and not knowing where to land. Uh, there was an early American painter, early, early century, 20th century, I can't remember which one it was, fairly well known, who called it the nth whoopee of the eye. And that was sort of, sort of what she was after, and she got. Mm -hmm. 